Hi, this is Roger in very windy Finland and today we're taking a look on how to color grade S-Log3 footage from the A7 IV using ACES. Alright, and for the impression ones we're going to do this really quickly with just three notes. Let me create two more. I'm going to put an ACES transform in the very first one, ACES transform in the very last one. In the first one, we are going from S log 3, S scam 3, because I was shooting in PP9, to ACES CCT. In the very last one, we're going from ACES CCT to Rex 709. And in the one in the middle, we're just going to adjust the exposure to a place where we like it. And I'll do that only by touching the offset because ACES is nice in that way. And that's the look I was going for. That's how I wanted the face exposed. And we are done. I had a timer on. Did you see how quick was this to get this in a good enough situation? As you can see. Now the question is, did we get good skin tones? Let's, well, let's take a look. I like how it looks, but our vector scope doesn't lie. And maybe let me add here a window so we can see more precisely whether we are correct or not on this. So this is skin. Let me turn this on. And as you can see, And now, even better, the skin is where it's supposed to be, and we didn't have to do almost any work at all. And now that we covered the impression ones, so what is ACES? ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System, which is basically a standard for color grading and correction from the Academy that awards you Oscars. Not that you're going to win an Oscar by color grading your A7 IV footage by that, but it is a system designed to make things easier. And another addendum for the impression ones, you might say that, well, this is a controlled environment. Uh, this was, so let's take another scene. And I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to copy the grade from one clip prior, and I might have to adjust the exposure, but that's all right. So color one clip prior, and you know what? This looks how it was when I was visiting that bit. Maybe I would like it to be a bit less dark, so I can put that offset not so down. And now we have a color corrected image. Now you have the room if you want to do some more precise grading. But the trouble that people have with lock is always how do I get proper colors and uh, adjusting the exposure curve. Let the software do the work for you. And let's do one yet another scene. Send a different angle color and apply from one click prior. And uh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that was a nice evening. And my intention is not to make a tutorial on how to color create the footage from the artistic perspective, but rather how to take away all the complications of interpreting color and interpreting the gamma curve of a lock profile if it's supported by the software. So when people talk about color science and then start adjusting things manually, it's kind of a bit backwards. There's color science and the science behind it. Just let the software work for you. And that's pretty much the video, but let's explain maybe why are we doing it this way. So let me take this all away and let's start from scratch. So what we have here is uh, an image shot with the uh, S7 IV uh, using 42 10 bit and the picture profile was PP9 which is S log3 and S cam3. Fortunately the ACES workflow does cover and does support S log formats from Sony cameras and because it's a 42 10 bit things work better and are even smoother. What we want to do is to not have to mess with this manually. If I try to do that by expanding 
uh, this curve manually doing something like the uh, well where do I want it I want it expanded maybe I know what I'm doing and then maybe I increase the saturation oh that looks weird why my skin looks weird my skin looks weird because I'm trying to manually interpret colors from a lock um, profile and a gamut profile and again the software can help me to do that let me just remove the notes create a new one and what we're gonna do is go into a color space that is nicer in my opinion to work with than fiddling with s lock and then let the computer interpret most of the color so then you can just focus on the creative aspect because it was pp9 s lock and scamut 3 the input transform is exactly from sony's s lock 3 and s gamma 3 if you would be shooting pp8 which is s lock 3 and s gamma 3 cine then you would choose that one we are going from this one and then we go into aces ccd which is the color space that we will be working in now this looks even flatter than a moment ago if you can see but now i'm not going to start working here because then i'm not going to see what i'm doing if i start adjusting the exposure this is still a very um, flat looking profile what i'm going to do is put a note in the very end which is our output transform going from aces ccd into our output color space, which in this case is Rec 709. And this is already a color corrected image. The colors are actually already looking good. What doesn't look good is the exposure. And that's because, as we know, to expose most log profiles, including as log 3, we tend to overexpose the image to preserve detail in the highlights. I don't know if I overdid it here, but that's how we do it. And now what I want is to work between these two nodes. So all the changes and adjustments are done in the ACs color space. I create a new node and it's going to be my exposure. And here that's a nice thing. I don't need to start really messing with the curves trying to interpret what is the S-lock curve. I can do, of course, find and find tune adjustments with the shadow mid and the highlights and whatnot, but just adjusting the offset has a really smooth way of adjusting the full exposure of the image without crashing things in the highlights or in the shadows. Because I want to underexpose now from the overexposed image i'm not going to be introducing any noise or anything so i'm just going down until it looks how i like it like this is really much like the impatient one because i'm not going to do much more as you can see in the waveform this is where my face is sitting there's contrast there's light and shadows i was lighting it a bit from the side so there's a bit of a rembrandtish type of look here but this is how i would like it to look if you want it well, more exposed then please do and having a brighter image that's that's up for grabs up for taste up to your taste but that's how i like it and that's the thing um, now i'm not showing or teaching how to color create how to be creative with all this but this is an excellent starting point and now you be creative now you can add blue to the shadows if you want and make this still an orange or you want to do that well let's do it i'm going to add another note as we established this is already correct so maybe I can add like, blue to the shadows. Oops, that's a lot of blue into the shadows. Well, let's take a look it's without the color create creative thing. And this is with a little bit of it. But you can do stuff and you're not going to mess up with your image and the actual color accuracy to get proper skin tones, which you do with S-Log3 and just using color space transforms, in this case, using ACES. But that's about it, really. Uh, there's not much more to it. The uh, question is, can I use this if I don't have a Sony 10-bit camera? Um, yes, I use exactly the same method with the Sony ZV-1, actually, which is, of course, a tiny sensor and it's only a bit, and it works pretty well as long as you don't push it like crazy. So for shooting a proper image that is properly exposed and it has a proper white balance with the Sony 8-bit camera, this method, which also gives this method also gives a pretty nice result. That's something I'd like to use. And now you might say, but well, there's still a bunch of nodes. I would like to just slap a lot and forget about it. Well, I mean, teach you one, one more thing. I'm gonna take this away. So now we have this really basic grid with the input, exposure, and output. If I go into my gallery, there are 
stills and power grids. I'm gonna actually add the power grid album just to show it to you. If now I grab a steel from here and it goes into my power grids, this steel you will be able to apply it across projects. If I close this project in DaVinci Resolve and I open a new one, this power grid is there. And I can name this this is SLAG3. And if I would not have this applied at all, I can just apply this. And the neat thing about applying a power grid is that unlike a lot, which is the one thing that you can maybe have more or less of it, you still have all the nodes with all the flexibility that you might need to adjust things in case you actually shot in a Scamut 3 Cine. You can still change this here. Or if you were shooting with or if you want to go out to a different color space with this film, whatever simulation things that I obviously don't know how to use. So you could do that. Or you need to adjust the exposure, or you want to adjust color or add something else. You can do all of that. But the basic color transformation, and you can forget about how to interpret the log profile and what will be the color accuracy, ACES does that for you. And just let's end with this. I love what I'm getting from the Sony A7 IV. I hope you liked the video. And we'll see you soon for some more content. Like, subscribe, you know the drill.